Hey, what's going on, you guys? How you doing? This is Rashad from Hebrew Productions. It's been a long time since I actually did one of these, but I figured I might as well go ahead and do a review of the Black Panther movie. As you all know, there's been a lot of anticipation and hype about it. Um, if you're wondering why I'm dressed up the way I am, I'm actually waiting. I'm going to teach a class later on today, um, dealing with... Um, a class that I'm teaching actually dealing with, dealing with uh, African-American history over at this middle school. But before that, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the film, The Black Panther. I saw it last night and it's been a lot of anticipation, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, particularly in the black community. A lot of us have been, have been real hyped up to go and see The Black Panther. Um, and I, I want to get to get, get into that a little bit later on. But first, I want to talk about the movie itself. So I'm warning you that if you have not seen the film, you probably want to shut off this video because I am going to give some spoilers to talk about certain things involving the motion picture. First off, the movie itself. I would have to say that the film itself, for the most part, was solid. I mean, it wasn't perfect. I did have some problems, I thought, with the writing. I had some problems um at, at the very end with uh, the cgi that was at the very end but for the most part the movie was pretty good i have to say i mean you know ryan coogler is is a very skilled and good filmmaker um the first two movies he did fruvel station and then creed which i thought was one of the best movies that came out actually last year creed and um i thought that he, that he and as as well as michael b jordan should have got an oscar nomination for their participation in those films but nevertheless uh he's three for three and black panther i think is is definitely uh, is, is definitely a great a good movie that he actually made it's not perfect though um i thought the set design for it was was, was very good the costuming was 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 incredible um I, I i would be shocked if if they don't receive a nomination for the costume designing and and as well as the um the um, direction of the movie by Ryan himself was good. The only problems I had was actually was the writing. I thought that some of the characters were not as developed as as I would have liked to have seen, particularly the um, Eric Killmonger, Killmonger character. Um, I would have liked to have seen how he grew up because we didn't know much about him ex except the fact that his father was a Wakandian and his father was killed by um, by his uncle, and and he had this uncontrollable uh, rage because he was he was he was basically an orphan left here in America, and um, he was and of course he was a revolutionary, and he wanted to free oppressed people all over the world is what he actually said. So I thought that was that was very interesting, and I'm, and I'm going to get back to that a little bit more when I talk about the symbolisms of of Eric Killmonger versus. Um, the Black Panther himself, uh, Takala. So, <clears throat> but 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 you know, but beyond that, I thought that the film was was good. It was it was, it was solid, solid, very good film, very good film. I would give it a minus if I had a scale of of A to of, of A to F. I would give it definitely an A minus. Not a perfect movie, but definitely you know, in terms of, of of the craftsmanship of it, it's 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 pretty good. It's excellent. Um, now. After dealing with that, I want to talk a little bit about the symbolisms of the characters. What Chikala is supposed to represent versus Killmonger. Chikala, of course, from the way that I saw it, he seemed to me to, to be kind of like a representation of a Martin Luther King or actually Obama. Obama probably is the, um, the you know, what he's supposed to represent on some level. Because he, you know, he, he, you know, he even says something that people said about Barack Obama was that he says, "I'm not the, I'm not the leader of, of all the people in the world. I'm the leader of Wakanda." Just like people said that Barack Obama was not the leader of African Americans; he was the leader of all Americans. And you know, and he he, he plays that same that same kind of um, he has the same kind of rhetoric that people use for Barack Obama. And not only just that, but also. Um, he seemed to only have commitment only towards his own people, but not towards African people, you know, in large. He wasn't a Pan-Africanist, um, and neither was his father. As a matter of fact, his father killed his brother for engaging in Pan-Africanism. When, when I watched it, that was something that stood out to me 
and I thought that was very interesting that um, the the, the Pan-Africanist revolutionary was was viewed as the villain, was viewed as the outsider, as the person who um, is is the, the 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 bad guy, the one who's extreme, and and you know in this film, and I thought that was that that was kind of interesting, and and uh, the Wakandans for the most part were very selfish people, and they were elitist people as well, and and Chicago and um, and the Black Panther was was very elitist. Which brings me to the flip side of it, which is Killmonger. And Killmonger represents, at its core, the rage of, of black America. The rage of black America. Um, the rage that many of us have and, and understand because we have been in the belly of the beast. We've been under the thumb of, of racism and white supremacy from the moment that we got here because we were kidnapped, we were brought here, we were left here. And we understand the system uh, pr pr probably better than any uh, oppressed group on the world because of, of how uh, this American uh, system has been set up to deal with us. And you saw that within the film that, that Eric Killmonger, he understood white supremacy and he understood um, oppression and racism a lot better than then the Black Panther. The Black Panther did not have did, did not have an understanding of that because he was groomed to be to be a king. He was isolated from the rest of the world. He was protected, and and the Eric Killmonger character was not protected, and and that led to a lot of the rage that you know that he actually had. But his character is supposed to symbolize, in a nutshell, the the uh, the anger that Black America has because of, of of a lot of 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 the things that the colonizers and and the West has has inflicted upon us. That's what he's supposed to represent, and and he's a Pan-Africanist revolutionary, is what he is. That's that's what that character um, is supposed to be. Um. Now you know, I, I'll I'll just you know give my my critique of the film. Um, I thought that it was it was good. It was great filmmaking. Personally, I had some problems with it. My biggest problem, like I said before, is that the way that the Eric Killmonger character was handled, it, it almost, I saw it as a demonization of African Americans, particularly African American men. And, um, and, and, and there, there was never a really in-depth explanation to why he was the way that he was. You saw that, that his, his father, who was also a, you know, Pan-African revolutionary, who was a Wakandan, who was a spy for Wakanda, was left in America. He was in Oakland, which, and that's not coincidental that he was in Oakland. For those of you who don't know, the o Oakland is 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 the hometown of the original Black Panther Party. That's the reason why he was in o in Oakland. Um, but but his father, you know, his father told um, Killmonger's father told uh, his uncle that. Look, people who look like us are suffering all over the world. We can do something to change it. And his dad didn't want to didn't want to do anything about that. His dad had a problem with it. And his dad, as a matter of fact, killed him because he wanted to help other black people black people all across the globe is what he wanted to do. He wanted to do that. His father was a Pan-Africanist revolutionary. And he saw, you know, the, uh, how hard we have. He you know, he saw that that the governments of the world, particularly the United States government with the help of the CIA, flooded um, the black community full of drugs. He saw this. He saw what was going on. And he was killed because of that. You know, and, and when I saw that, you know, with, 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 with Chikala, you know, th that in itself, the fact that Chikala saw the CIA as friends, what he said, this guy is a friend of mine, and I said to myself, when has the CIA ever been friends to black people in America or the world? This is the same CIA that 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 um, used the black community to fund an illegal war against the Contras over in Nicaragua. This is the same CIA that that flooded the black community full of heroin. This is the same CIA that that uh, sent in the FBI to murder Fred Hampton in his sleep when he was with his pregnant uh, girlfriend. This is the same CIA that, you know, that designed Coal Intel Pro to destroy, you know, uh, black resistance movements to 
um, to racism back then and even today. It's the same CIA. So when has the CIA ever been a friend to us? And to me, when I looked at that, it, it clearly showed that this character did not have any understanding of what his cousin, um, Eric Killmonger, had to go through or what or what or what people outside of Wakanda, black people outside of Wakanda, what they go through and, and, and what, what you know what they go through. And I, I thought that was uh, in, I thought that was actually interesting and brilliant how they actually implemented that, you know, within within the film. Um, I don't. I didn't see Eric Killmonger truthfully as being a, although he is the antagonist. But I didn't see him as being a villain. I didn't see him as that. I saw him as being a freedom fighter, and and that was my biggest problem I had with it was that the freedom fighter is punished, while the collaborator, which is which is um, um, the Black Panther, is is praised, <laughs> you know, in this story. He's praised in this story. You know. Because he's not trying to, to liberate black folks. He's not trying to. He's not trying to, 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 to destroy, you know, global white supremacy and bring true equality, which is what his cousin was, was trying to do. And that was something that I had with, you know, with, you know, the, the film in itself. Um, another thing that I saw in this movie that I thought was very interesting thematically was... The theme that's dealing with um, the right to return, because Eric Killmonger was was T'Challa's cousin, and that was not done by by accident. That he actually was his cousin. You know, black folks here in, in this part of the world and the Western Hemisphere, the black folks in Africa are our cousins, genetically are our cousins. Okay. That's where we come from. That, that that's that's the, the the origin of where our you know our ethnic group actually comes from is 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 from them. But um, so I, so it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't you know by accident that that was designed that he was actually um, Chikala's cousin, and they're making a statement about the right to return, because to my knowledge the only country I can think of that actually has a a policy where if African-Americans come there, we can get dual citizenship is Ghana. And there's been talks, and we've been actually talking about this for decades, is that where's our right to return to any of these African nations? Where's our right to return? There's things that African-Americans have that, that, that uh, black people in Africa have that we can benefit and help each other. And the key to our liberation is our collaboration together, us working together. Just like you saw in the film, Africans have the natural resources, which is what that blue li that purple liquid was supposed to be. But African Americans, we have uh, the money, and truth and truth be told, we have the knowledge in terms of how this system works. And that's what that Eric Killmonger character uh, symbolized was was the, the spook that sat by the door. He studied he studied white supremacy, and he knew exactly how it worked, and and, and he was able to. Um, infiltrate certain organizations in order to use the things that they taught him against them to overthrow them and that's what he exactly and that's what he was doing um and you know in that film so so the, so the movie was dropping some gems it was dropping some gems on us um in a lot of different ways um i you know just hope that that some people got that and doesn't and don't look at it as as a as a as a um, a movie that caused dissension between African Americans and Black folks from Africa, because the movie on, on a certain on, on a certain level, I think the way it was written, that's that that was what it was doing. You know, it was almost portraying uh, Eric Killmonger as if he was a he he was a um, a misogynist. You know, he allowed his girlfriend to be killed, but that's not what was going on from what I saw. I saw it as a revolutionary act. He saw it as the fact that we were at war and within war, you, you, you have to look at the bigger picture. It's like a big chess game. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your queen in order for you to get a checkmate. And that's what Eric Kilmar was doing. That's why his girlfriend, if you notice, she stood up and she said to him, um, I'm sorry, you know, because she knew that he had to make a decision. Because he knew that the only way that he would that he would get to Wakanda and be able to challenge 
um, to call up for the throne so he can do what he needed to do to 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 to, uh, to liberate all of the oppressed people you know across the globe was to kill um, Claude who killed Claude because a gatekeeper of Wakanda wanted him dead as well they wanted him dead because he killed his father and he knew that was the only way that he would able, that he would be able to actually get into Wakanda so I didn't see it as a, you know as you know black men you know, or this black man hating, you know, black women or hating women in general. I saw it as 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 he was a, a tacticianist who looked at it through through the eyes of, of of war. And in war, you have to sit up, you have to make decisions, and you have to treat your decisions as if it's a chess game. So, and in chess, those of you who play chess, some there's no emotions involved in it, but sometimes you have to sacrifice your queen literally in, in order for you to get a checkmate. So. And you saw the same the same dynamic play, you know, a little bit later on. But 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 this time it was on the it was it was it was the opposite direction of of the um, I can't remember the the the, the, the uh, sister's name, but the one who's in The Walking Dead, um, who plays Michelle. But her threatening her husband, and, and, and when he stood up and he said to her, "You would kill me," and he said, "She said yes for Wakanda, I would." which means she understood the same exact thing, that she is no bigger than the group, that the goals of the, gr of, of the group supersede the goals of the individual. And, and, and with Eric, Kill, Eric Killmonger killing his girlfriend to kill, to kill um, Claude to, get, to, to accomplish his ultimate goal was the same exact principle, that the, 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 goal, of the, the goal of the group is more important than the goal of the individual. And there's people out there all over the globe who are suffering, who who need you know who need help. And that's what I got from it. Um, there might be some other things that that I saw that you know that I might be missing, but I, I you know for the most part I thought it was a good film. I thought I thought it was you know it, 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 it was a good not perfect film. You know, um, I still said in one of my comments on Facebook, and I say today that I challenge black filmmakers. We need to make our own stuff. We shouldn't have to wait for Disney to make a, a black superhero movie. We could have made this movie probably 10 years ago, 20 years ago. There's enough of us who have enough money to do it. And it shouldn't be up to Disney to shape our image. Because I do like the fact that you, you have uh, droves of black folks coming and embracing our Africanness. That's cool. I got no problem with that whatsoever. What I do got a problem with is that really it took Disney for you to give you the green light to, to, to actually say it's okay for you to be black. Because let's be real, a lot of these people that I've seen on, on YouTube and, and on Facebook and, and, and Instagram wearing African dashikis, never worn African dashiki before in their life. Never, you know, embrace Africanism a day before in their life. And as a matter of fact, when you had black folks like Tariq Nasheed that came out with Hidden Colors and he was putting out documentaries dealing with black history, and yet others, and, you know, and others that were putting out um, uh, content that deals that deals with us, deals deals with our history, real about real black superheroes, not fictitious superheroes made, you know, by by Marvel. We don't support them, but yet we want to go and support this. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't support the Black Panther movie. Don't get don't get wrong. Don't get me wrong about what I'm saying. I'm making a point that it should not. Um, we should not wait for for Disney or any other company that especially if, if if they're not black owned to sit up and tell us that it's okay for us to now acknowledge the fact that we're black now it's okay to be black well anyway that's all i have to say about that um like and subscribe to the page and i will talk to you soon it is uh black history month as we all know february so look up some, you know, read up on your history. Go study more about Africa, and um, and let, let let's let's try to engage in some in some Pan Africanism. So, uh, black folks out there who are listening from the continent, black people here in America, we need a right to return. We got business to work, so we can work together. Jews and Israel have, have a right to return. We should have a right to return. And the only way that we're going to get ourselves out of the conditions that we're in is for us to work together. I Shay, take care, bye.